Today on Blue 58, Nathaniel Hackett is the Packers' new offensive coordinator. What does he bring to the team, and what role is he going to play this year? Thanks to a listener from Sweden, we take up both of those questions on this episode. Blue 58! Hello and welcome to another episode of Blue 58, the one and only podcast to thepowersweep.com. I am your host, John Meerdink. Happy to be with you here yet again. Exciting stuff to talk about on this episode. One thing in particular, I mentioned a couple episodes ago, one of the great things about the offseason is we can take really specific things and kind of hold them up and take really specific looks at them, kind of in-depth looks at one very specific part of the Packers. And that's been a fun thing to do over the last few episodes. We've got a, a questioner here from a listener that I alluded to on the last episode. And uh, I would like to take that up here. Last time around, we talked about uh, defensive coordinator Mike Pettin. And this time around, we're going to talk about offensive coordinator Nathaniel Hackett. Here's the question from Peter. He writes, I am from Sweden and always listen to your podcast that I find to be very, very good. Thank you very much. I also think it's good. Uh, that's why I keep doing it. And I hope you think it's good as well. Peter does. Anyway, uh, he continues, I've become a much smarter Packers fan since I started to listen to the podcast. I do have a question. Everybody is talking about Matt's new playbook, Matt LaFleur. But what we also have is a new offensive coordinator in Nathaniel Hackett, but nobody talks about him or what he can do for the team in the playbook and scheme. What's your opinion about him and what he will do for the team? Like I've said, very excellent question, and thank you, Peter, for listening and taking the time to write in. If you would like to write in to The Power Sweep or Blue 58, check us out on Facebook and on Twitter or by typing The Power Sweep 1959 into the email provider or at gmail.com into the email provider of your choice. You, perhaps, like Peter, could have your question answered on a future episode of the show. Like I said, great question, like this a lot, and I do think Nathaniel Hackett is kind of a forgotten part of this Packers team right now. I'm sure once the Packers have a rough afternoon at some point in the 2019 season, which they will, people are going to figure out that Nathaniel Hackett is part of this team very quickly and will summarily cause for, call for his firing. Okay, sure, that just is something that's going to happen. That's part of having the job. But I don't think as a whole we can forget about Hackett because he's going to be a key part of the story of the Matt LaFleur era Packers, at least for this year and beyond. Let's dive into a little bit of why. First, a quick recap on who Nathaniel Hackett is and where he's been. He's 39 years old, only about eight weeks older than Matt LaFleur, and he most recently coached with the Jacksonville Jaguars. He was their offensive coordinator from 2016 through part of 2018. He did get fired midway through last year, but that appears to have largely been a sacrificial lamb type firing in Jacksonville. I mean, you know what they're dealing with with as far as personnel at the quarterback position in Jacksonville. It's, it's not great. Uh, prior to that, he's had a variety of different roles at both the college and professional level. Let's quick do a rundown. Starting in 2002, he was a linebacker's assistant linebacker's coach at UC Davis, where his dad, who we'll talk about in a second, also went to school. Uh, he then moved on for the next three years. He held a variety of positions at Stanford. Then he broke into the NFL at the age of 27, working as an offensive quality control coach. He was there for two years before taking the same role with the Buffalo Bills. After another two years in Buffalo, he dropped back down to the college game and held three different jobs. For Syracuse, he was first their quarterbacks and tight ends coach, then their offensive coordinator. After three years in total at Syracuse, he was back to the NFL, back to Buffalo, where he was their offensive coordinator. Two seasons after he arrived in Buffalo for the second time, he moved south to Jacksonville, where he spent a year as their quarterbacks coach, then took over as their quarterback slash interim offensive coordinator before, you know, the rest of the story from there. And now he is the offensive coordinator in Green Bay. And of course, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, he does have a notable father. Notable, at least in NFL circuits. His dad is Paul Hackett, a longtime NFL coach in a variety of capacities. Also did a lot of work at the college level, too. Also a mentor of sorts to one Mike McCarthy. Put a pin in that idea for a second, though. We are going to circle back to it. The question of what exactly Matt, uh, excuse me, Nathaniel Hackett's role is in Matt LaFleur's coaching organization is a little bit harder to pin down. Yes, nominally he is the offensive coordinator, but Matt LaFleur, as he has said, is going to be calling the play. So what does that mean for Nathaniel Hackett? Well, the way I've understood his role is this. He's essentially Matt LaFleur's problem solver and second pair of eyes. 
If something's not working the way it should, Hackett is going to be there to help Lafleur figure out a solution. He's going to be another person who's working on game plans and strategy and things like that and helping Matt LaFleur put together what they're going to be doing on a weekly basis. He's also going to be helping a lot with game planning and making sure all the trains run on time on offense with meetings and everybody getting the key information that they're supposed to be getting at the right times. That is a big part of a non-play calling offensive coordinator's job, just making sure everybody's on the same page. Not so much deciding what they're going to do, but making sure everybody stays together. This is what Mike McCarthy's offensive coordinators did in large part. Think about Tom Clements, Edgar Bennett, Joe Philbin. Under McCarthy, though, the job split or responsibility seemed to tilt pretty heavily towards McCarthy, like a 90-10 split almost at times. Towards the end of his time in Green Bay, it really seemed regularly like like McCarthy was overreaching on a lot of things, just trying to do too much and and ending up doing a lot less as a result. This doesn't quite feel that way. If it was me, I would really like to have a role like what it seems that Nathaniel Hackett has in Green Bay. This is a really great opportunity to do some good things while not necessarily having to be the big guy in charge. During my career, I had a really good opportunity to work in kind of this capacity back back when I was a, a radio news reporter. Uh, in one of the stops along my journey, I was not the the top dog, not the the head coach of the newsroom, but I was responsible for story planning. I was responsible for identifying story leads, and I had a lot of freedom to work behind the scenes on a lot of different things. And it was cool because my boss really trusted me with that responsibility. And that was really rewarding because he wouldn't tell me how a story needed to be covered or what he wanted. He would just say, go to this location, cover this event. Whatever you bring back is going to be good. That's really rewarding. But there is a downside to roles like that. And you can see the potential for a downside in a role like this and what Nathaniel Hackett is doing. It can be hard to quantify exactly what you do for people. And that can leave you vulnerable. Your value if you're doing your job well, should be really apparent to the people inside the organization. So I'm, I'm never going to have any doubt that Matt LaFleur, since he hired Nathaniel Hackett, is going to be a fan of Hackett's work if he's doing his job the way that he's supposed to. He, he picked him, and he knows what he's going to be doing. But outside the organization, it's really hard to put a finger on what exactly this guy does and what, perhaps more importantly, he should be blamed for. And I would guess the chances are he's going to be blamed for a lot of things that he's not really in charge of. He may not be the primary decision maker on. But that's just kind of how things work with certain roles in the NFL and a lot of a lot of different jobs. You get none of the credit but all of the blame. I don't think Hackett is going to get all of the blame just given how Matt LaFleur's job seems to be shaping up and the way that he's going to call plays and things like that. But there is a pretty good chance that he is going to get a lot of of the blame for bad things that happen on the Packers offense. And people aren't really going to know what to credit him with just because his role isn't as visible as that of Matt LaFleur. Now that's a little bit about what Hackett could do in terms of his role, but I'm a lot more interested in what exactly he brings to the role. And to answer that question, we have to look into the history uh, of both Matt LaFleur and Nathaniel Hackett as coaches. I think you can argue And if you want to argue, that's fine. I probably would not fight back. I think there is um, enough room on this position to have a variety of takes on it. But I think you can view both Hackett and Lafleur as coming from different branches of the West Coast offensive tree. What is the West Coast offense? You've probably heard this term a lot. You probably will still hear it a lot. But in short, it's the offensive system designed by Bill Walsh, which is intended to stretch the defense horizontally in order to open up opportunities for deep passing plays or or generally just chunk plays or shot plays or whatever. There are a ton of things you can read about the West Coast system, and you can go as deep as you want to go. We're not going to do that on this episode. The what of the West Coast offense as it pertains to this episode is not as important to the story as the who. But as an aside, I think that the development of the West Coast offense was one of the worst good things to ever happen to the NFL. On the one hand, it made offense and communicating on offense a lot easier for a lot of people. And it really modernized the game in the sort of tectonic shift sort of way that we really haven't seen quite as comparably since. 
there have been kind of responses to the, the West Coast offense, but there hasn't been an entirely new thing like the West Coast offense, I don't think, at least. And that has kind of led to the downside of the West Coast offense, because as good as it's made it for a lot of offensive coordinators and coaches, it has been so effective that it's sucked all the oxygen out of the development chamber for any other offensive system. The West Coast offense is so good that you have a much higher barrier to overcome if you want to run anything other than that, just because people think it's weird. And coaches in football are notoriously conservative, and they have a a big aversion to weird. But if you look at the responses to the West Coast offense, and if you look at the evolution of the offense since Bill Walsh, and really prior to him, Don Coryell too, um, there have been basically two big branches of the West Coast offense since then. You really have the Bill Walsh branch and the Mike Shanahan branch. Let's talk about the Shanahan branch first. He developed a more run-heavy version of the West Coast offense that's really spread throughout the league thanks to a couple important members of his coaching tree. And he has a lot of people on his coaching tree, but two important ones are Gary Kubiak and Kyle Shanahan. Shanahan in particular, in addition to being his son, is notable because he is the most direction we have, most direct connection we have between Matt LaFleur and the original West Coast offense system. And you get a lot of the West Coast offense in Kyle Shanahan and by extension Matt LaFleur, but you also get the Mike Shanahan version of it that really results in what you hear talked about as LaFleur's wide zone running scheme. The zone running scheme is the the run heavy version of the West Coast offense. And Matt LaFleur's in particular is like the modern version of the running version of the West Coast offense. Makes sense? Hopefully we didn't lose you along the way there. So Matt LaFleur is the run version of the West Coast offense. Back on the Bill Walsh branch, you have the more pass-heavy version of the Bill Walsh offense. You could argue that this is the more true version of the West Coast offense because it is primarily a passing system, but I don't think even Bill Walsh would really think of it that way. I think the best football coaches are in their heart of hearts really just pragmatists. They might like or talk about the idea of having their system, but I think most of them would tell you that their system is whatever works the best, and they don't really care about the 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 minute details of what that system actually is. They're more interested in the broad strokes of just having the stuff that works best. So that's kind of how you've gotten the the development of the West Coast offense as it's progressed throughout its years. Uh, Mike Shanahan thinks that the West Coast offense is better realized as a more run-focused scheme with your zone blocking and more focus on on running the ball. Other play, other people might think it's more pass-specific, more like Bill Walsh originally implemented it. You probably know a couple notable names from the Bill Walsh branch of the West Coast offensive tree, but here's a couple you should know for sure. First, Mike Holmgren, he himself a direct descendant of Bill Walsh, and then Mike McCarthy, who is almost a direct descendant of Bill Walsh. Walsh worked under a guy, excuse me, McCarthy worked under a guy who worked under Bill Walsh. That guy was Paul Hackett, who we've talked about already. Hackett worked as Walsh's quarterback's coach from 1983 through 1985. He later worked as a a coach at the University of Pittsburgh and then for the Kansas City Chiefs. You may recognize those two stops uh, from also Mike McCarthy's coaching progression. He worked originally under Hackett at Pittsburgh and then traveled with him um, to Kansas City, where he was an offensive quality control coach and then quarterbacks coach from 93 through 1997, then for another year after Hackett left, sticking around in 1998. So you've got the original West Coast offense, more or less implemented by Bill Walsh. Then you've got the Bill Walsh branch of that tree, more pass heavy. And from there, you trace down Mike Holmgren, Paul Hackett, Mike McCarthy. On the Mike Shanahan side, you get Kyle Shanahan, Matt LaFleur. What does all this mean about Nathaniel Hackett? Well, let's make one thing perfectly clear. Nathaniel Hackett doesn't have direct coaching influence from his dad. He didn't really work with him a lot directly. So any influence on what he does as a football coach is more just from being around his dad than working directly for him. But it's hard to really look at his history as a coach and not see some influence of the more passing-oriented 
uh, West Coast system on his journey. Just look at the positions that he's had. You know, quarterbacks coach, offensive quality control, uh, offensive coordinator. Those tend to be quarterback specific jobs, and quarterback specific jobs tend to be passing heavy. I think it's fair to look at Nathaniel Hackett in Green Bay then as the offensive coach in charge of the passing game, and Lafleur as the offensive coach in charge of the whole shebang as well as the running game. So as a practical matter, this means that Matt LaFleur is going to be generating the scheme and then working with offensive line coach Adam Stenovich and running backs coach Ben Sermons to make that scheme and that vision a reality in the run game. But Hackett is going to be responding to that scheme and working with quarterbacks coach Luke Getze and Aaron Rodgers and all of the wide receivers. He'll make it a reality in the passing game. However... It's also important to note that Hackett has a lot of familiarity and interest with wide zone or wide zone adjacent sort of running schemes. In a video that I've posted on my Twitter, which you should check out because it's interesting and and worth um, watching because it gives a little bit of insight into both Nathaniel Hackett and the run pass option, which is good to know about in 2019. He cites Rich Rodriguez as one of his coaching influences. And if there's any really perfect bridge between the extreme pass-heavy versions of the West Coast offense and the Mike Shanahan run-heavy version with kind of an ultra-modern twist, it's probably Rich Rodriguez. He does some wacky stuff. Wherever he's done, had a job as a head coach, he's done some really unusual, interesting stuff. Running at a shotgun, running with two running backs, doing the, the read option type stuff. It's basically the hyper-modern version of the West Coast offense on both sides. You get passing and running, and you get all the 2019 bells and whistles. Shotgun, exotic motion, things like that. That's interesting, and I think that also plays into Nathaniel Hackett's development as a football coach and what he could bring to the Packers. The bottom line is this. I think that Nathaniel Hackett is going to help Matt LaFleur blend all of the best aspects of the West Coast offense together while helping modernize their attack in a way that we really haven't seen in Green Bay in a long time. I think Mike McCarthy is a bit of a bum rap for not modernizing his offense. He did. He did. He did over the last couple of years in Green Bay. He didn't do it enough, but he he did make some changes. But the Packers really haven't had a wholesale change in how they do their offense in a long, long time, probably since 2006. Lafleur is going to do that. Hackett is going to help with that. And I think if you're looking for a guy to help modernize your offense, Nathaniel Hackett is a good guy to do that. That's to finally answer Peter's question from the very beginning. He asked my opinion on Nathaniel Hackett. I think if you're looking to modernize your offense and come up with creative ways to do things, I think it'd be hard to do much worse than Nathaniel Hackett. Because just look at the things that he's had to deal with in his coaching stops. He's had to deal with a relative paucity of quarterback talent in both Buffalo and in Jacksonville. And then he was working for a bunch of college kids right there, or working with, rather, a bunch of college kids right there in the middle. I know there's a lot of great college quarterbacks and and football players out there, but working with college players, you're never going to be able to reliably count on them the way that you can on professional athletes. They're just not as good. They're not as developed. They're not as skilled. Hackett had to figure out a way to get his uh, get things done with those guys. So he had to get creative. He had to get simple. He had to figure out how to be complex without being overwhelming. And I think that's a great attribute to have. If you just watch this video that I shared, it's a great example of the kind of teacher that he could be. And I think if there's anything that we've learned about what makes good coaches in Green Bay over the past couple of years, it's good teachers. Mike Pettin is a great example. He's considered a great teacher. He's always had his kill principle, K-I-L-L, keep it likable and learnable. He wants people to be able to learn what he's, he's doing quickly and easily. And he wants to make sure that he can teach it to them quickly and easily in a way that's going to make sense to them. Hackett gives me a lot of those same vibes, and I think he's going to be a great addition to the Packers coaching staff. Peter, I hope that answered your question. If you didn't, feel free to ask a follow-up, and we'll try to expand on that again in further episodes. And if you have any other questions, be sure to drop us a line on Facebook, on Twitter, or via email. 
uh, with the address thepowersweep1959 at gmail.com. That's all the, that I've got for you on this particular episode. We thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate you taking the time. If you liked what you heard and want to help us keep things going, leave us a review and a rating on iTunes. That is the freest and easiest way to support the show. Of course, if you want to do a little bit more, and uh, support us financially as well. We do appreciate that. Donate a dollar per month at patreon.com slash thepowersweep. Uh, that will give you access to our new monthly show uh, that is kind of going to be a check-in on what's going on with the Packers each and every every month featuring co-host Gary Zillaby. And also, you can check out our great t-shirts and sweatshirts by clicking the shop link at thepowersweep.com. As always, every bit of feedback you give us helps us make Blue 58 and the Power Sweep better, which of course furthers our mission of helping everyone become smarter Packers fans. And as I always say, smarter Packers fans are better Packers fans, and better Packers fans are what we're all trying to be. I've been your host, John Meerdink. We will see you next time on Blue 58.